the thing that's ridiculous here, and you you guys may be expecting me to say Iowa State 7. No, it's it's Texas at 21. <laughs> like, I just, what are we doing here? And why is it that Texas gets this? I know why it is. This is a rhetorical question, though. Why is it that Texas gets this benefit of the doubt? And a program like Oklahoma State doesn't. Oklahoma State was just outside the top 25, right? So they're 26. But if there's a program that should be getting this unjustified bump every single year, just this trust to put them into the top 25, it's the Cowboys. It's not Texas. Texas has been ranked in the preseason poll five straight years. Five straight years. Only two of those years have they wound up ranked higher than 25th at the end of the year. Three times they have been in the final poll. One of those times they were literally ranked 25th. Another was 19th. And then there was one where they actually were vaulted up closer. That was the Sam Ellinger, we're back, or whatever. Texas is back. Whatever it was that he said. That year, Texas did earn it. Every other year it hasn't happened. They've averaged a finish of 7-5 and five in that time span. So the five years they've been picked in the preseason top 25 poll, they have won an average of seven games. Which again, as I outlined, that's going to put you like 30th to 40th in the country. So why, why do we continue to give them this bump? It's just, it's like a placeholder spot for Texas. And it's when I talk about self fulfilling prophecies and how the media can sometimes influence things, this is how. Like we just will Texas into being something that matters, an entity that matters every year in college football, when the reality is they don't. They might from how many people are going to watch the games just because they have a large fan base, but they don't in terms of who's actually going to matter up at the top of the game every single year. Like, who's going to affect the college football playoff in any way? In any way. And Texas just doesn't do that. Meanwhile, you have Oklahoma State sitting around here who has eight-plus wins in eight of the last ten years. They've finished ranked six of the last ten seasons. And they, we can even take the history out of it. I think Oklahoma State deserves to get this type of bump based on their history alone because Mike Gundy has just been the model of consistency every single year there. But beyond just that, it's let's look at what, they, what the teams were last year. Okay, so Oklahoma State was a better team than Texas last year. They were 8-3 as opposed to Texas being 7-3. and three. They played a game against each other that went to overtime. They were clearly virtual equals. And now Texas has lost the defining player of their program for the last four years, Sam Ellinger. Like, Texas lost the quarterback. Texas lost the rock of that program and the thing that kept them from being a five-win program over the last four years. They're also going through the transition of a new head coach, bringing in a new head coach. And we can debate about Sark until the cows come home. He took over a Washington program that was in a bad spot and brought them to respectability, but never won more than eight games, went through the personal issues at USC, and is now getting his first head coaching job in years because of that. To me, that's just a lot of uncertainty and a lot of benefit of the doubt that we would not extend to hardly any other team in the country. Losing the one guy that was the glue keeping everything together, and it was just barely keeping things together enough for Texas to still at least be somewhat respectable. But that guy's gone. That was the identity. The entire identity of the program has changed. Everything we've seen out of Texas going back to Mac Brown being hired, which was damn near three decades ago, has been bad hire after bad hire. So I don't understand what would give you trust in Texas as a team this year, Texas historically in general, or Texas making head coaching hires. I don't, I don't know what gives you that confidence based on the recent history of that university. So I, I just think it's criminal that Oklahoma State is sitting on the outside looking in and Texas is starting in the top 25. Polls don't matter that much in the end. It's all kind of a silly construct. But this is what we have to debate. This is the fodder that we have right now, and it's, it's just stupid. It's stupid that we do this every single year. And this might be kind of a lame answer to that question, but... It could be just the brand of Texas and what they've created over the past 10 to 15 years. 
I mean, they're they're typically respectable, but it, I I kind of compare them with Michigan. So Michigan over the last five years, really the Jim Harbaugh era after maybe the first year, they're always typically ranked pretty high, but they never meet the expectations. They're not competing for Big Ten championships. Meanwhile, Texas is in the same boat. They're respectable, but in the long run, they don't meet the expectations, and they're not year in, year out competing for the Big 12 championship. I mean, even before we went to a, back to the Big 12 championship game, they're not winning the conference. They're always losing to Oklahoma, at least when it comes to the standings. Michigan is always losing to Ohio State. They just can't get over the, the hurdle. But they do have the brand. Voters, I guess they just can't see themselves not having Texas or Michigan in top 25s, which I do now. Actually, I believe Michigan is not ranked in the top 25 to start the year. Very apt. Very apt comparison there. Michigan to Texas. They have been the same thing. These massive brands that have done nothing in terms of actual legitimate winning in their conferences over the last decade. Very, very apropos. And I guess we've gotten there on Michigan. I don't know why it is that we've arrived there with Michigan, but we haven't with Texas. Michigan doesn't have a quarterback either. I mean, it may be Alan Bowman, former Texas Tech Red Raider, who's kind of made of glass that starts a quarterback for them. So the comparisons are definitely there. But yeah, Texas starts the year in the top 25. As high as 19, by the way. They're even higher in the, the coaches' poll at number 19. And like, look, I know that's SIDs voting in that for the most part, but like the coaches should know better. You guys should know better. Yes, it's 100% Texas's brand that puts them here. Much like it feels like I said earlier, K-State – if they have a team that's worthy of being ranked, is going to start 200 meters behind everybody else. You you have to prove yourself extra to to get into top 25 rankings. Texas is the opposite. They're going to start 400 meters ahead. They get a full lap on everybody, and that's the working running head start that Texas has here. So it's ridiculous, but it's college football. It's what we have, and it would be a lot more fun and funny to argue about if not for the fact that it has real consequences now because everybody else is going to be screwed and left out in the cold.